Today, I want to share five things that your band should never do before you step on stage. Make sure you watch this episode, listen to this episode to avoid these major mistakes. Let's get started. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Behind the Space Bar. Behind the Space Bar is the podcast for playback techs, musicians, music directors, really anyone performing on stage. If this is your first time joining me, if this is your first time on the podcast, then welcome. And if uh, this is not your first time and you're coming back, then welcome back. So glad you are here. Today's uh, episode is a bit of a mini workshop, uh, and I want to do this differently. You know, typically I would say, here's some some tips for success. Here's some things you should do. I want to do today's episode as kind of a, a negative. We're going to put the pain first. I want you to feel the pain of this. And I want to talk about five things that your band should never do before you step on stage. These are things I've learned from my own mistakes. These are things I've learned from watching other bands do. Do not do these things. And if you avoid these, then you are going to have success. So let's talk about number one, the number one thing that your band should not do before stepping on stage. Never do this before stepping on stage is change things right before you get on stage. What I mean by that is uh, changing song order, changing song structure, replacing a song, walk, literally walking on stage and going, hey, we're not going to do that first song. We're going to do that third song. Now, I have been in bands that have done this, uh, have done this, and I'll say I've been in bands that have done this, and we've done it successfully. We made it through just fine. Everything was okay. But generally speaking, do not change things right before stepping on stage, right? If you've landed on a, uh, landed on an arrangement, uh, if you've settled on a structure, if your set is set in stone, don't change it. Like leave it the way it is. Now, granted, I understand those of you listening and watching this podcast um, are smart people. If, if you're a behind the space bar listener, you're a smart person. Um, and sometimes working with artists, us smart people are really stretched to the core, right? We step on stage and the artist goes, Hey, uh, I really feel like we need to do this song here. We need to do that song there. And we're going, no, no, no. I could tell you, you, I, I don't feel that we need to do that. And they're going, no, but we do really need to do that. I understand sometimes you're stuck with that, but generally speaking, avoid changing things before you step on stage. And if you can do that, then that's really going to help. Now let's talk about changing something on stage that, yeah, the artist probably wouldn't do this, but we have likely done that. And that is updating software, updating firmware, right? Uh, you're on stage, you get through sound check, everything's going well. Then suddenly ding, main stage has an update. Ableton has an update. What should I do? I can't stand to see the little bubble there, right? We've got to fix that. We've got to solve that. So I'm going to update my firmware. I'm going to update my software before uh, I restart things. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do this after sound check. Don't do this before the performance, before you step on stage. Just wait. Uh, I always try to tell people, think of like, wait till you're in a lab type environment. What I mean by that is you're not in the middle of a show run. You're not uh, about to start a show. You are uh, back home. You're um, uh, you know not going to about do rehearsal. You're not about to work with another artist. You've got a week to two weeks stretch to really figure things out to figure out how you want to do this, to make sure the software update is going to work. Do not make the time between sound check and rehearsal and performance, the time that you update your software firmware. Just do not do it. If you want to succeed, um, you have uh, got to stop changing things right before you step on stage. You've got to stop updating software at the last minute. Now, I'm going to tell you number three here in just a moment, and this is something that's been very crucial to me. This has been very crucial to uh, folks that I work with. That's been very helpful to make sure we don't screw things up. But before I do that, just want to ask if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, then leave us a rating and review. Make sure you subscribe to the pod uh, over there. Pod, that's what the cool kids say, right? The pod. Uh, and if you're watching over on YouTube, then make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon. Uh, it's just a way of saying thanks. And hitting that bell icon is going to make sure you don't miss anything. Uh, I post brand new episodes of Behind the Space Bar every Monday and uh, brand new tutorials every single day, Monday through Sunday. So let's get back to it. Number three, um, do not hope that something works, right? Do never do this before stepping on stage, simply hoping that something works. Uh, your goal for you should be that you're confident you're going to nail it when you step on stage. Let me tell you a bit of a story. Again, like last week's episode, it's time, story time with Uncle Will. Um, I worked with a band. I was, I was in a band. Um, and we were learning a song and I'm trying to keep details as minimal as possible as to, uh, I've changed the identity and the exact scenarios to protect those involved. But, uh, I was in a band and we were learning a song and, uh, there was a bit of argument as to, 
if this song um, had a one over three or a three. Uh, and by that, if you've never played with numbers, it's like, uh, let's say we're in the key of E. Were we playing a G sharp minor or were we playing an E with G sharp in the bass? One over three versus like a three chord, right? Doesn't make a huge difference, but um, it does have a different vibe, a different sound. Actually, I would venture to say it does make a huge difference. Like it may be just a little passing chord, but a one, one over three to four has a completely different vibe than a one, a three chord to a four. If you're with me, if you agree, uh, you know, say amen and then leave a comment or whatever. Let me know, right? If you feel the same way. Anyway, regardless. So we were in this scenario, we're in rehearsal. And we're going back and forth. And actually this song, there was, I think in the verses, if I remember correctly, it was a three minor. Like it kind of hung there a little bit. It was a little more sorrowful. Like we, I think we kind of diamond on the three chord. We waited a measure or two. But in the chorus, going between, you know, whatever we were, one, three, one, one over three to four, right? It, it made a difference. Uh, it was super important. Just go with me. It was super important. But here's, here's what happened is we... Um, uh, talked about it. We rehearsed. Uh, and then guess what happened? We actually st stood on stage and I realized the very first time that uh, we played that song, we had never like fully settled on what to do. The first time we had played through that song correctly. And I, I'm trying to remember, I, I think we got that song correctly. I hope we got the song correctly. We stepped on stage, but regardless, the first time we played that song all the way through and we all did our best guess, whether it was three or one over three was uh, on stage for live, the live performance the first time, right? We did not get it right in rehearsal. Um, we were just hoping that something works. We just kind of got so flustered and frustrated. At least the person who was leading the band at the time got so frustrated and flustered that they just said, uh, well, whatever, we'll just, we'll do it. It's fine. You can, you can just, um, uh, you know, just figure it out. We'll figure it out on stage and we'll, we'll go for it again. Uh, hope is a terrible backup plan. And we were just hoping that this worked. We were hoping we figured out and it, it didn't work out very well. Uh, this leads me to my, uh, fourth point here is I often say hope is a terrible backup plan. Never do this before stepping on stage, which is having no backup plan. You have got to have a backup plan. I know so many times people implement something brand new. You know, I, I work a lot with churches and Easter and Christmas is like the Super Bowl. And so these are the big times that they try something new. They try automating lyrics. They try, uh, you know, controlling video stuff or whatever, and they implement something and they have issues. They, they, uh, watch a video on YouTube as opposed to reaching out to someone to have them really set it up really, really well. And so um, they walk out of rehearsal before they get into their performance and they're just literally hoping that it works and they have no backup plan. If it doesn't work, right? We have this lyric video and this video is going to start it and Ableton's going to trigger the lyric video and then we're going to start the stems for the song in Ableton. But they don't have a discussion on, okay, if this communication doesn't work, what are we going to do then, right? If tracks go down in Ableton for some reason, what are we going to do? We have no backup plan. You've got to have a backup plan. Hope is not a good backup plan, so you've got to have a backup plan. Um, I'm going to get to number five here in just a second, but again, just as a reminder, as I said before, do me a favor if you like this content, if you like the show, you like the channel. Uh, if you're on YouTube, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're notified when I post new content. And if you're watching over uh, or listening over on Apple Podcasts, do me a favor, subscribe, leave a rating and review that really, really does help. So number five uh, thing that you should never do before stepping on stage is try something on stage you've never rehearsed. I get it. There's a thrill on living on the edge and going, hey, let's um, let's try this song that we rehearsed one time before that we have not perfected. Again, go back to my previous point of hoping something works. We haven't really rehearsed this. We, we don't have this down yet. Let's try it out for the first time ever. You often hear bands say this like, hey, we're going to try something new. See what you guys think. Uh, pro tip, they're actually not trying it new for the first time. They're just kind of saying that to make you feel like this is like a, hey, this is a behind the scenes special thing that I'm letting you in on. You get to hear us rehearse this song for the first time, but they're not doing it for the first time in front of you. So you can say, hey, we're going to try this for the first time. We're going to try something new, um, but don't try something on stage that you haven't rehearsed before, that you haven't tried. Don't let the first time you step on stage, I mentioned this earlier with that example of the song, don't let the first time you step on stage be the first time you've tried something, you've implemented something brand new. Um, you step on stage, you've got a brand new guitar pedal and you decide for this performance, you're going to implement it and try it. What if the cable's bad? 
What if the pedal just sucks? What if it's just awful? Do not, do not do this. So let's recap really quickly. Uh, five things your band should never do before stepping on stage. Number one, change things right before going on stage. Number two, updating software. Number three, hoping something works without ironing out the details in rehearsal first. Uh, number four, having no backup plan. Again, hoping it works. Hope is a terrible backup plan, but not truly having a backup plan. And then number five, trying something on stage you have never rehearsed. Again, I want your band to avoid the pain that doing these five mistakes will cause. Do not do, do them. Do the opposite of them and you're going to be good. The other thing you can do that's going to be good for you is to leave a rating or review if you're listening on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Hit the bell icon so you're notified when we go live. And again, thank you guys so much for listening and watching every single week. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.